<laughs> now we're going to look at um, 1 Peter. 1 Peter 1, 15. I promise you all the Bible songs. Remember that? Yeah, where is it? My mother knows it. <coughs> we're going to sing it together. And to say it, you have to have the table of contents of the Bible in front of you. <coughs> You've got to have the table of contents of the Bible before you. We're going to sing it. We're going to sing it every Sunday until we memorize it. And we'll memorize it first. I have a gift. Uh-oh. A sandwich. It's not a sandwich. <laughs> I've got to give. Amen? Amen? When you have the table of contents before you have the Bible, get ready. We're going to sing this song until we know it. We're going to learn the books of the Bible in order. I wish, I wish Reverend Jesse was here. Uh oh. He would do this song very good. Amen? Amen. Amen. Table of contents are ready? Yeah. Got, everybody got the reading glasses on? Yeah. Francine? Okay. Ready? Yes. I picked this song myself. Come on, song. Okay. And while you're doing that, we're going to find 1 Peter 1 15. Let me try again. If it doesn't work, I got, I'll fix it for next week. sermon anyway. Amen? Amen. First, Peter, um, first Peter 1, 15 and 16. First Peter 1, 15 and 16. And it reads, But as he which hath called you is holy, so be ye holy in all manner of conversation. Here we come. Mm -hmm. Yeah, too bad I'm recording this, right? <laughs> right? Hold on one second. First Peter, first 16, 1 and 16. Because it is written, Be ye holy, for I am holy. I read it again. But as he was called you as holy, so be ye holy in all manner of conversation. Because it is written, Be ye holy, for I am holy. That word conversation means dealing. And behavior. So in all your behavior, in all manner of conversation, be holy. Amen. Father, we thank you, we love you, and we adore you. We lift you up. We give you the praise and the honor and the glory. We thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your sacrifice. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for all the things you have given us, yes. O oh God, because without these, we would have nothing. Lord, we love you, we magnify you, and we adore you. In your holy name we say, Amen. Amen. I know we talk about being holy a whole lot, and, and the way I was, I, the way I brought up, was brought up through church, holy is always the bad thing, right? Yes. I, I, I want to run around and do things. Don't do that. You can't be holy without doing that. Um, my, my spiritual father was passed away. He said when he was growing up, he couldn't play baseball. Right. Baseball was, was deemed to be not holy. That's right. Huh? That's right. Couldn't turn on the TV. That was called not being holy. Woman couldn't wear pants. Yep. Called what? Not being holy. Yeah. You couldn't try to dance through the funky four corners. <laughs> that was called not being holy. Yes. Hmm? Yes. <laughs> Those y'all. And, and and holiness. Holiness has become a thing that we don't, we, we don't understand, that we don't like. And we turn away from it because these people taught us as the best they could because they wanted to protect us from certain things. Probably the people who were doing these things were not holy, so they wanted to keep us away, away from crowds who were not holy. And, and but we thought that nothing's wrong with baseball. It's American pastime. Nothing wrong with pants. It can be windy. You don't, you don't, don't want to be mired on the road, you know? 
It could be all sorts of things, but, but they, right. they, they did these things the best way they can, so let's not put them down. They gave us what they had, That's which is all any person can do. But when I'm talking about being holy, it's a whole different ballgame. I'm talking about when your life falls apart. I'm talking about when everything goes wrong. I'm, I'm talking about when he who thought that he would love you forever left you for somebody else. I'm talking about when the thing you wanted most and you got that thing and it turns around and it blows up in your face publicly. I'm talking about when everything is gone and when your life falls apart and when your life falls apart publicly. The word of God says, be ye holy. This is the only way to get out of it, I'm sorry. And this is the way God has used people all the time. He's used them through, through, through trouble. He has brought you through so many troubles, toils and snares, that you have already come. And the question he's asking you, will you now be holy? He's shown you that your ways have turned to nothing and turned to dust. Now that they're gone, they, they got your stuff and are gone. They fired you and are gone. They beat you up and they're gone. Every good thing you gave them and they're gone. And God saying, now what you going to do? He's saying to you, now be ye holy. Because you have no place else to go. If you think you have another place to go. And if you think there's another option for you. If you think you have another trick up your sleeve. You are not being holy. Let me tell you, the reasons why these people came to Jesus that were sick and blind and lame, not because they thought he was the only thing in the world, because they understood that they needed the Lord. There was more sick people out there. Many, many, many more blind people. They had no penicillin. They had no x-rays to set bone. When you fall, you break your leg, that's your leg. But these people decided that in their troubles and in their sickness and in their blindness and in their conduct and behavior that this time they're going to bring it to the Lord and look what happened to them. Such is life. Many of us go through problems on top of problems and there's a problem underlying that problem. But we'll never call out to God. We'll never say, hold it now. I've tried this way. And I tried that way. And I listened to that person. And I went and did this. And I, and I pulled this trick. And I did that. But it still got even worse. We, some, most of us never stop and say, for once, I'm going to be holy. I bring your attention to the Lord God Almighty. And the word of God says in Genesis 1, 1, what did it say? In the beginning, what? God. And what did he do? He created what? The heavens and the earth. So God is going about his thing like we do. He's creating a habitation to, to come to our hearts. And what happens immediately after that? The earth turns to a void and chaos. It's in the Bible reading. So when we're going about what we want to do, trouble is going to come. And the Bible says that when the earth turned into a chaos and a void, the word of God says the spirit of God hovered above. So when you, you are you are broken back down in your problem don't just sit there sometimes you got to remember that in Genesis 1 1 the Spirit of God is hovering above he just waiting for you to look to the hills from what cometh your strength he just wants you to call out to him because even when he created in the first instance things went wrong and things will go wrong He's shown you how to be holy. And how did he get the thing done when the thing he created turned into a mess? How did he get the thing done? His spirit hovered above. And what did he say? Let there be light. Hallelujah, Jesus. And, and so when you hold on to the spirit of God, when you're down low, when you're level to the ground, when everything is going wrong and people telling you look to the left and to the right, all you got to do is understand that the Lord God is hovering spiritually right above you. And he's saying then as in now, he's saying, let there be light. He wants you to see what the truth is, that there is no way out of the circumstance unless you're holy. That's right. Amen. He did it the holy way through his word. He didn't fight. He didn't cuss. He didn't do anything other than that. He, he, he just said, let there be light on the situation. What did he do? He looked to the obstacles in his way. And he wanted to change the situation. And, and when he spoke his word, the situation changed. And the word of God said that, that, that after that, the, the, the dry land separated from the wet land. 
What does that mean? That sometimes when we're in trouble, and when we call out to God, the reason why we don't call out to God, because He's going to show us what we've been depending on. He's going to show us how our soul is. He's going to show us how separate we are from the spiritual, from the physical. The water was on one side. That's the spiritual part. That's where we are. The dry land was in the other part. That's, the, that, that's our thinking and our soul. And sometimes our soul is, is treated so badly. We treat our soul like a vagabond begging for bread. That we might throw a little something, something every now and then. But I'm reminded of a song sung by Jennifer Holliday. And, and the song, what does it say? And I'm telling you, I'm not leaving. Your soul is telling you all the time. Your soul is saying, you're the best thing I've ever had. And I'm staying, I'm staying. And the, your soul every morning is saying that, and, and you're going to love me. Let me tell you, you're either going to love your soul now, or you're going to love it when, it, when, it, when it's gone and you're in the pit. You're going to love it real good then. But, but, the, but you don't have to wait until these things happen. Your soul is crying out right now for a better way of life. you got situations that you can't believe that's happened to you. And the Lord God is saying, be ye holy. Be ye holy is not trying to wear a certain uh, sort of clothing. It's, it's no other thing than just holding on to Jesus' hand, asking him to show you. And being holy takes a little bit of courage. It's just like the people who were sick and waiting on Jesus. How were they holy? They said, Lord, I've got five husbands and the one I got ain't mine. Lord, I'm blind. Okay. Huh? Lord, I can't get up. Lord, I had an issue for 14 years and I spent all my money. Who's going to tell that to Jesus openly? We don't do that. We, 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 we don't get it right. Being holy is, is, is not fasting. It's not even tithing. It's not even doing everything that, that you think is supposed to do like a formula in the, in, in the Bible. It is simply taking up your cross and following the Lord. There is something wrong with each and every one of us. Each and every one of us got problems. I'm looking right at you. Look at me too. I got problems. Let me, let me tell you. And we, we hide these problems. We, 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 we sublimate these problems. We, 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 we press them down. And we don't deal with them. Because we think we can hide from one another. But you can't hide. You, why hide anyway? Why hide from the Lord anyway? These people got healed because they did not hide from the Lord. We have to come out of this situation. Being holy is not some trick bag that people put on us. Being holy is just coming to the Lord honestly. It's just realizing that the light of the Lord is ready to shine upon you and showing you what the problem is. Why do we run around with the same old problem? We got the same problems with our health, which is our diet. We got the same problem with our money because of the way we spend it. We got the same problems with love because we pick these crazy people. We got the same problems that, 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 that you, you can imagine. It is easy. If you just admit you got a problem. If you admit today you got a problem, Jesus is, is, is ready right now to deliver you. Sometimes we don't want the Lord's blessings, I'm telling you. Because sometimes they come in a way we don't like. I'm reminded of, of the man. He, he, he came to Jesus and he said, Jesus, my, my daughter is dying. His only child. And, and Jesus said, I'm going to come to your house. And as he came to, Jesus came to his house, they came back and said, don't trouble the master. Your daughter is dead. How are you going to deal with that? You see, how are you going to deal with these situations? How are you going to deal with them and they're going to come? You're going to pray for things and it's not going to happen. You're going to ask the Lord to, to, to give you what you want and he's not going to do it. That is the test for you. Understand that the enemy Satan, he, he, he's seeking who we can devour. But it's only a tool. He's trying to sift between you to see whether you're chaff or your grain. Whether you're going to get the news and fall apart or you're going to get the news and stand anyway and be ye holy. That's all I'm saying to you. You don't have to be perfect. You don't have to do anything. Whatever comes to you and faces you and tries to stop you anyway, be ye holy. The Bible says, Simon said in the Bible, though he slay me, yet will I trust him. And that's holiness. That's, that's all it is. Let me tell you. Holiness, once you begin it that way, that you're going to hold on to Jesus' hand, that you're going to be honest, that you're going to tell him what ails you. You're going to tell him, Lord, I'm no good. You're going to be true to what, who you are before the Lord. He would not say, I never knew you. If you just show him these things, then all of a sudden, you become holy. The, 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 the disciples walked with Jesus all those years to his death and yet did not know holiness in, in the pardon of their sins. They did not. So just because we call out to Jesus' name 
don't mean we're holy. They weren't holy until they learned how to stand their ground. Until the Holy Ghost came upon them. The Holy Ghost was hovering above their situations, just like in the beginning of the world. And God said, let there be light. And it became a circumstance where they can see. Jesus says he will do these things for us if we just stand our ground and be holy. I'm reminded of Noah. They laughed him to scorn because he was trying to be holy. Remember? I would probably laugh at him too. We're in the desert, Noah. You're building a ship. Can you imagine the jokes I'll make over Noah? But Noah held his ground. Noah did what the Lord said. And God is going to tell you to do things like that. God is going to tell you, be different. He's going to tell you, be who you are. That's being holy. It's telling you, listen to your soul crying out that you're going to love me. Embrace your soul the way I made it unique like nobody else's. Hold on to what I gave you. So what? You look as weird as Noah did in the desert. So what? Look at this man Noah now. Amen. Even like, like Abel. Abel knew that that, that, that Cain was seeding. You know what your brother would have do you in. Come on. You know. What did Abel do? He was holy. He stood his ground. He did not stop giving his sacrifices to the Lord. The Lord even told Cain, and most of us are like Cain. He says, Cain, if you just do well, it will change. People, if you just do well, it will change. But Abel, we don't want, we don't want Abel's reward. Abel's reward was to lose his life. And you know what? You might lose it. You might lose everything that, that, that you wanted. Like that man lost his daughter. You might lose it. Like Joe, you might lose them all. But what are you going to do? Are you going to stop worshiping the Lord? If he takes everything from you, what do you think he's planning for you? Huh? What do you think that is? Huh? Yes. You think that's not to, to, to clear the things away from you that, that, that are not really yours and to give you what's even better? What would happen to Job? Yes. Well, he got double for his trouble. The Bible is clear. Job had to pray for them kids every morning. <laughs> Hallelujah. And Job was walking around talking about, I'm a good man, like we do. I'm a good man. Mother said, she's a good woman. But God want to take you higher. And sometimes we, we are so hard-headed, the only thing he can do is send a flood for, for your behind. And he will send it. And when he send the flood, don't think he hates you. When you find yourself always in trouble and your heart is, is hurting, I'm saying to you, don't think he hates you. I'm saying that when that situation comes, listen to what Peter said. Be holy. That's all you have to do. You will hold on to Jesus' hand. Be holy. And be holy means I'm going to stand. No matter what God people say, I'm going to stand. I don't care how I look. I'm going to stand. No matter what they take from me, I'm going to stand. I'm going to praise God in and I'm going to praise God out. I don't care if I did it and, and they are right I did it. I don't care what they say and I'm going to be holy. I'm not giving this up for nobody, for no man, no how, no way. Because he made me. He made me this way. He made me different. He made me weird. He made me unique. He made me short, tall, fat. He made you and he will make no jump. So hold Hold on to Jesus' hand. Why do you worry anyway? What can they do to you? They can laugh. They can talk. They can scoff. They can put you yeah. out. They yeah. can fire bullets at you. But if yeah. you stand and be holy, you shall get the, the, the job done. And you yeah. shall see what it's going to do. What it's gonna do. Yeah. And then you'll hear your soul say, you're going to love me. That's all yeah. this is all about. Your yeah. soul the says that your soul says that you're going to love your soul. Let me tell you, being holy is, is like the, the very steps that, that, that God took. You, 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 sometimes you, you got to make a list of what's in you, yes. what's wrong with you. Yes. Yes. Make that list and give it to the yes. God. Yes, Lord. Yes. Mm. yes. Try it. If, if, yes. Try it. It's everybody in the Bible did this. I said, Lord, I'm no good. Yes. Peter told the Lord, get away from me. I'm a sinful man. Hallelujah, Jesus. And, and we don't say that. Yeah. What do we say? Hey. Lord, send me, send me some money. Yes. <laughs> Ooh, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> huh? yeah. We don't look at the hard things in our lives. 
Don't you want to get out of this? Yeah. Don't you want something better, people? Come on now. Yeah. Don't you want don't you want tomorrow to step out and be right? You don't have to wait six months down the road. You can get it done today. All you have to do is say no more. No more. I'm not letting myself take myself yes. out. Yes. Yes. Then you don't have to do it till you will do it to yourself. Amen. You will sabotage yourself. Yes. You will eat yourself to death. Yes. You will drink yourself to death. Yes. You will do something else to yourself to death. You will do it to death because the, the, the fact of the matter is you may not even love yourself yet. <coughs> Tell God you don't love yourself. Yes, Lord. I know many of us have been beaten and kicked since we were children. Yes. I know many of us have had words spoken to us that still ring in our minds. Yes. I know many of us can find no way out. I know many of us in the morning wake up and don't know what they're going to find because the earth is still in a void and chaos. It still is. Yes. I'm going to tell you, the enemy had, had, had it out for you when you were in your mother's womb. He knew exactly who you would be. He knew the chance you would have, like the chance you have today to bring this thing out. You got the chance today to be as great as you thought you were low. That's how great you can be today. I'm not telling no lie. If you doubt it, try me. When, when you try it, bring back a good offering. Because I'm telling you, all you have to do is hold on to Jesus' hand. All you got to do is write down what's wrong with you. When you go to the doctor, you don't tell him, doctor, I came because it's a nice day, do you? You don't tell him, doctor, I came so you can see my nice shirt. You don't say, doctor, I came because I bought some new shoes. Yeah. No. You say, doctor, it hurt. Doctor, I got a backache. Yeah. Doctor, I, I got a heart attack. Yeah. Doctor, my mind is in a fog. Yeah. Doctor, give me something to go to sleep. Yeah. Yeah. Doctor, give me something to wake up. Yeah. Doctor, give me something to stop this pain. We don't tell that to Jesus. Yeah. Never once. We don't say, Jesus, give me something to stop this pain. We don't tell Jesus, give me something to go to sleep. We don't tell Jesus that I can't stop doing what I do to myself. Jesus, Jesus, I am wrong as the day is long. Jesus, I am evil. Jesus, I want to do people in. Jesus, I am hurt. Je hurt so bad that I don't even know what goodness feels like. I can't even get it straight, my Lord. I remember the Bible says that there was a man of the Gadarenes and yes. he was naked and could chain him. Such is our souls too. Sometimes our souls can be so mad, so many, so crazy that we can't get it right. But when that naked man saw the Lord, he ran. He, he ran to Jesus' feet and worshipped him. And yes. Jesus immediately saw his problem. He said, what's your name? And they said, I am legion. And let me tell you, our problems are legion. Our problems are not one. They are manifold. They are problems on top of problems. And we sit here and let them stew and, and, and stew like we some great big crock pot. Why? Why do we have to suffer? You can get it done today. All you have to do is be honest with yourself. Take the right step. You are the one who can turn yourself around today. Why? Deal with these obstacles. You got them. Right. Amen. Get these obstacles out of your life. Why live like you're living now? Does Jesus really know you? Yes. <clears throat> we sit here and we, we, we dress so good. We drive our cars through everything else. But deep in our hearts is a hungry, dangerous thing because we don't want to even take care of ourselves properly. You can make the outside look good. You can look great. You can look sexy. You, you can even talk good and preach good. But until you have bring your obstacles to the Lord, it shall not get you no place. I'm telling you. Let me tell you. You have a choice. It's either going to be the pain of discipline over your life or it's going to be the pain of regret. And I'm sure right now we've got regret on top of regret. Why? We don't want to stand. We don't want to be honest with the Lord. We don't want to tell him what the problem is. We don't want to deal with the obstacles. We want to stay and try to play safe and think that we're going to sit in the corner, but you're not going to get away. I'm reminded that the Bible says that there was a rich young ruler, and he came to Jesus and said, Lord, I fast. He said, Lord, I tithe. Lord, I give all these things away. Can I follow you? And Jesus said, give everything you have and, and take up your cross and follow me. And that man went away crying because he could not give up the one thing that he valued the most. And the thing that is holding us back is the thing that we value the most. And that thing that we value the most is the thing on which we built our pride. Amen. Give it up. So what have you got to lose? Aren't you trying to lose it now? Why don't you take another step? you got to come out. You either come out or you stay. 
You either move forward or you stand where you are. Jesus is very clear. He don't compromise. Either you're with him or you're against him. This is a tough thing to understand, but we live in a tough time. And I, what I said to you earlier, this world is not going to remain as pretty as it is. We got problems galore. Study the history yourself. We think that ISIS is a passing fancy. I say to you, no. It never has been. It never will be. The world is changing under our feet. And we're sitting here as they did in the days of Noah, drinking and eating and partying and going about our business. But hear the word of God today. He said, the only thing you got to worry about is to be holy. Be holy means get the things out of the attic of your soul and put them out on the lawn and get rid of them. Dump it. You got no use for it. It's holding you down. You want to be free? This is how you do it. The Lord God is, 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 is also amazing because he's only saying to us, take my yoke upon you. For my burden is easy, for my yoke is light. He's not giving you a hard thing to do. He's not saying, do this, do that, the other. He's just saying, come to him. Give your problems to him. And I just dare you to write. Let me tell you something. If you don't believe that you have to change, you won't be holy. If you think that you're okay the way you are, you'll never be holy. But if you're fed up of losing, if you're fed up of being mediocre, if you're fed up of living the way you are, and I'm fed up, I don't care if you're not, but I'm fed up. And I know what the great things that God has put before me to do. I know the vision he has given me since a child. And you know it too. There is, there is no game here. You know what you're supposed to be doing. You know how great you are. And you're sitting up here talented as can be and, and, and just living lowly to the ground. Why? Because we're phonies. We're not, we're not, we're not being true to the Lord. We're not telling him what our problems are. Tell him what your problems are. There's a song in the Bible that says count your blessings. Name them one by one and you'll be surprised to see what the Lord has done. Turn in reverse. Count your curses. Name them one by one. And you'll be surprised to see what you and the devil have done. And once you count these things that have been hurting you and harming you, the things that you do, and say, Lord, let me change this, immediately your life changes. And, and the beautiful thing about it is that when you change, your world changes. Let me tell you, when you change, your world changes. You, you get what you get because you're who you are. You get what you get is because of how you deal and interact with people. You give them, you put out crap about yourself, they're going to crap upon you. They might hand you a roll of tissue. But if you believe it and, and you act like you're supposed to act, and if you are true to yourself and you walk through the world, you shall see the true results you're supposed to get a long time ago. And it's not too late. You might say, I'm 30, it's too late. I rebuke you. You might say your 40 is too late. I rebuke you too. You might say your 7 is too late. I triple rebuke you. You should know better. You can get this thing done. You can turn it around. In fact, the older you are, is the more miraculous it would be. 80 years old. One man said in the Bible, he was still able to take the mountain. We can still take this mountain. And this mountain is our hard hearts. We have to get this thing done right. Either you're going to be great or you're going to be a footstool. You have no choice. And I say to come out. Come out from your circumstances. Come out of living low and small. Come out of being poor and, and, and beat down. Come out of hurting yourself every day. Come out of being afraid to wake up in the morning. Come out of being afraid that you won't go to sleep at night. Come out of, of all the things you've done to yourself. Come out of what they said to you. Come out of what they did to you. Come out of your own skin. And, and, and tell the Lord exactly what the problem is. And watch your life change. And I say to you, it's not a tomorrow change. It's a today change. You change your outlook. You change your, 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 your mindset toward holiness. You give God the problem, not somebody else. Give God the problem and watch him clean you out. You shall be made anew. But the problem is, you just can't do it once. It has to be done every day. Every day you got to put before you the things you want done, the things that you have to get done, the things that are troubling you, who your, your, your sorry soul is. Write these things down. And once you get these things out the way, you want to look at what you want to be. Look at what you want to be. Write down what you want to be. Give it up to the Lord. 
And once you write down what you want to be, all of a sudden, you, your mind changes. And the Bible says, as a man thinketh, so is he. And if you just get your mind on the things that you're supposed to do, and forget all those other things, and forget all those things you used to do, watch your life change. It's, it's a miracle. I'm telling you, you can get these things done if you just be holy. And holiness just means that whatever's wrong with me, I give it to the Lord. Whatever I want to do, I give it to the Lord and watch God get it done. I can end by, by, by my mentor used to talk. What did he say, Mother Sills? In all your ways, what? Acknowledge him. Yeah. And he shall direct your path. And that's holiness. Yeah. It's nothing else. You don't have a choice. You can play around with this thing. We can meet on the other side of glory or, or, I was, or, or, or you or we'll see each other through a barrier. I don't know who's going to get there. But the person who's going to get there is the person who's honest to God and says, God, I got a problem. God, I'm broken. <coughs> God, I keep failing. Then you got to tell God what you want to do. And watch him bless it. There is no other way. There's a part of the Bible that, that says in Deuteronomy that if you have a blemish, you can't go into the holies of holies. To ever preach. If, if, if you got a broken leg, if you got a skin problem, if, if, if you got a, a genitalia problem, you can't go to the holies of holy. But the thing is that it's just like going into your best life. If you would just understand that if, if you would give these things to Jesus, he's going to erase those, the, the, those, those errors. He's going to erase those blemishes. And we can't get into the, the holy place unless those blemishes have been cleaned out by God. We can do this, people, if you're just not afraid to let go. Let it go. Sometimes a bad habit becomes a way of life. Get rid of them bad habits. Write down, in fact, you want to see your sins? It's your habits. Your sins are your habits. It's what you do in the morning, what you do in the midday, what you do at night. It's your habits that are killing you. Change your habits to good habits. Figure out what you want from God. Figure out who you really are and work towards it and watch what the Lord does. Amen? Amen. I'm done. Please stand.